Kendall Mill District. Hardworking families knit together, a distinctive Southern Mill Village culture. The entire district is a reminder of the importance of the textile industry in South Carolina. At its heart is Kendall Mill, formerly Watery Plant, designed by W.B. Smith Whaley in 1899 in the Romanesque style, a model of textile architecture. Within the Mill Village, facing 10-acre landscaped Kendall Park, are supervisor and operative homes, consisting of one and one and a half story and a few two-story frame houses that date from 1900 to around 1925. North of the mill is spring-fed Kendall Lake. Located on Camden's east side, Kendall Mill Historic District was listed in the National Register in 1982. Kendall Mill Village Site Number One. The watery plant of Kendall Mill is located at 90 East Hampton Street. Originally built for the DeKalb Cotton Mill Company in 1899, Noted architect W.B. Smith Whaley designed the watery plant of Kendall Mill in the Romanesque Revival style. At that time, it was considered a model of textile architecture. The original portion of the building consists of a four-story rectangular brick building with a back stair tower and an imposing six-story front stair tower. The mill saw several owners until, in 1916, it was purchased by the H.P. Kendall Company. From 1900 until 1948, the owners of the mill also maintained the mill village. Kendall Mill Village contained up to 100 homes for the mill workers. Along with residences, the company also provided a day school, a church, sporting facilities, and a store. In 1948, the mill owners sold the homes to the employees and donated the lake and park to the city of Camden. Kendall Mill Village Site Number 2. The mill supervisor's residence is located at 1519 Park Circle. The supervisor's residence dates to around 1905. This was a two-story weatherboard home with two chimneys and a one-story wraparound front porch. One corner featured a one-story projecting three-sided bay with a front gable and overhanging eaves. Originally, the second floor had a dormer projected for both the front and the side of the roof. The Mill Village concept was similar to the familiar plantation or farm system that developed after the Civil War. For sharecroppers and tenant farmers in general, the landowner provided housing and equipment while the farmer provided the labor. Once the crop was sold, the profits, if there were any, were shared according to whatever agreement had been reached. Often, the sharecropper found himself or herself in debt at the end of the growing season. Mill owners also provided rental housing and a company store. To attract the best workers, they often provided schools, health care, recreation facilities, and a church. Although the company effectively controlled all aspects of life in the village, individual mill workers made the village a self-sustaining community. Kendall Mill Village Site Number 3. The Paymaster's Residence is located at 1515 Park Circle. Built around 1925, this home was originally a square, one-story dwelling with at least two hip dormers and a wraparound front porch. The house was enlarged in the 1960s. In the early 20th century, textile mills provided an opportunity for many people in the predominantly agricultural southern states to leave the farm and moved to a more urban environment. Along with regular wages, mill work provided an opportunity for farm families to have better access to schools and community life. As hard and dangerous as working in a mill was, for many former sharecroppers and tenant farmers, getting a job at a textile mill could be a way out of an endless cycle of back-breaking farm work and never-ending debt. Kendall Mill Village Site Number 4 the service manager's residence is located at 1507 Park Circle. Built around 1925, the service manager's home was a one-story weatherboard house with a wraparound front porch. The porch featured Tuscan columns and a wooden balustrade. A hipped roof front dormer provided light to the attic area. A portion of the front porch has been enclosed. The National Register nomination requesting recognition for the Kendall Mill Village 
emphasize the rarity of this district. Many mills and accompanying villages have been either demolished or renovated out of existence. Although modernized, both the community and the mill have maintained their architectural and historic integrity. The virtually intact village and mill reminds us of the historic importance of the textile industry in South Carolina. At the same time, they illustrate the interconnected relationship between capital and labor that existed in the early 20th century. After more than 100 years, the Watery Mill continues to operate as a textile mill, and the Kendall Mill Village remains a vibrant, cohesive community. Kendall Mill Village, Site Number 5 Kendall Lake is located along Lakeshore Drive. Kendall Lake is a 50-acre lake fed by Pine Tree Creek. Once known as Factory Pond, Camden residents have harnessed the lake's power to operate grist mills, sawmills, tanneries, and cotton mills since at least 1761 and possibly earlier. Along with using the lake for power, the mill company also used the pond to attract workers. When touting the mill village, the company emphasized that the mill pond afforded bathing opportunities during the warm season and provided a great view for many of the homes. Kendall Mill Village Site Number 6, 2000 and 2010 Lakeshore Drive. These two homes were built between 1900 and 1925. Both of these dwellings are one-story rectangular cottages with weatherboard cladding, a low-pitched gable roof, and an inside chimney. The roof extends to cover the full-length front porch. Both homes face Kendall Lake. The prime location and larger size indicate that these homes were probably originally lived in by mill supervisors and their families. When the DeKalb Cotton Mill opened in 1899, the company advertised that a village of 70 houses was on site for the use of the employees. In 1916, after the Kendall Company purchased the mill, a brochure noted that the mill village had 100 homes with electricity and modern facilities. Some of the smaller homes only had three rooms to house an entire family. Other houses in the village had four, five, and six room houses. Between 1910 and 1920, all of the older homes were modernized with bathrooms, painting, and re-roofing. Kendall Mill Village Site Number 7, 2050 Lakeshore Drive. Although this building resembles the other residences in the village, originally it was the mill's day nursery. The nursery was just one of the inducements offered by the textile mill's owners to attract and keep good workers. The mill village was a completely self-sustained community with its own infirmary, school, church, recreation facilities, and a band. Workers also organized holiday celebrations like May Day festivals and Independence Day barbecues. Although the mill contributed funding for many of these activities, in 1920, the community proudly reported that they were no longer dependent on the mill, but were self-sustaining in their entertainments. Also in 1920, for the first time, village members set up their own government and elected a mayor and alderman. Although the mill owners still owned the village, the people of the village began making many decisions related to the betterment of their community. Two of their first actions were to set up an employee sick benefit association and to set aside garden spots for each family. Kendall Mill Village Site Number 8, 1900 Kendall Street. Built between 1910 and 1923, this home is one and a half stories with a gable roof, a central chimney, and a front shed dormer. The front door opens onto a wide front porch with a hipped roof supported by four columns. Between 1910 and 1920, the mill owners modernized the older homes and built new homes. Electricity, modern facilities, and a view of the pond were all used as inducements to attract and keep employees. In 1907, the mill employed 250 workers, and the mill village had a population of around 700. At a company picnic in 1920, between 1,500 and 2,000 people attended. In 1923, the Camden Chronicle reported that this mill village is one of the most up-to-date to be found in the southern states. Kendall Mill Village, Site Number 9, 2125 Kendall Street. 
Built between 1910 and 1923, this is one of a small number of two-story cottages. It has a central chimney and rear shed rooms. The one-story, full facade front porch has a shed roof supported by four square columns. The mill owners constructed seven general types of housing in the mill village. The different types of houses were built in groups and at different times. The majority are either one or one and a half stories. A few have two stories. Some houses had two front doors so that they could be used as a single family home or as a duplex. The size of the house and its proximity to the mill were indicative of the relative status of the resident. Kendall Mill Village, site number 10. The Watery Baptist Church is located at 2024 Hale Street. The first church on this site was built prior to 1917 and burned around 1929. The company donated the land for the church and contributed $200 toward its construction. It was the only church in the village and, although a Baptist congregation, served all members of the community. After fire destroyed the original wooden church, the congregation erected a modern brick church built on the original site. They dedicated the new brick church in October 1929.